Jesus speaks about wasting time and demands of the world. April 20th, 2018. Words from Jesus to Sister Claire, spoken by Jackie. May you all be enriched by the sweetness of Jesus as you listen to this, and know that he has done for me what he wishes to do for you. You are so precious to him, and these dialogues are for the purpose of demonstrating that to you, dear family. When I came into prayer tonight, it was with a heavy heart. I had allowed distractions into my life that were eating my time, like locusts, passing a ripe field of wheat. I felt such conviction and futility and was truly ashamed of myself. When Jesus approached me in a tuxedo and I saw myself in an evening gown, suddenly everything came spilling out and all I could do was cry. Jesus began, Oh, how I have wanted to talk to you, Claire. All this pain and sorrow for nothing. Just for nothing. I know what you're feeling and going through. I understand it all. And we are going to come out of it. Now. You have your priorities set in your heart. And you see that your flesh is taking too much from your life. How I want to extricate you from this pit, dearest. Will you cooperate with me? Help me, Lord. I want to cooperate with you. Are you at the end of your end yet? I think I'm pretty close. More circumcision, more releasing the foolish things. You try to fit them in, but they take far more time than you have to give them. And what he's talking about here is, sometimes someone is sick or doesn't show up for work. I end up doing menial things instead of just ignoring them and waiting for them to pick up on it the next day. But really, I've got to be so much more focused on music than on this stuff and also on his messages to you. This calls for more self-control in your life, more release of the foolish things. Are you with me? The enemy has buffeted you with your own self-will and caused you to form habits. Once they work on you for long enough, they don't have to continue to do so. They only keep an eye on you to make sure you are still wasting time. Wow, that's a revelation. But for the most part, they leave off with that work, since you're chasing your own tail under your own compulsion and habit. They just revisit to cause you to go further and further into it and make sure you don't get out. But I am removing that influence from your life and all you need to do is say, no, I have better things to do with Jesus. Because we do things together, that is the things that matter to me we do together. The other things, flights and fences, you do on your own. Doesn't it feel badly when you know you're wasting time? Yes, Lord, it feels very badly. Lately I so relate to Paul. He said, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. That's in Romans 7.15. That's interesting, because I got this rima this morning. And I thought, Paul, wow, maybe an intercessor from heaven? Yes, Claire, you have those looking at you who truly care for your predicaments, 
and really want to help you, both by example of their lives in history and to pray for you. You don't even have to ask for prayer. They just observe your situation and their hearts are moved to pity. Lord, you just gave me that Rima and I wondered what it meant. My heart is moved to pity for you. Wow, now I understand. It meant all the things you shed tears about tonight. I have much pity and deep understanding of your struggles. It doesn't suffice to say you are much too drawn to the world. You have to feel the deep futility of the time you could have been singing, and instead you were doing something of the flesh. Something someone else could have done if you were more patient. But back to what I was saying. You don't have to send a message to Paul through my Holy Spirit. He gets it. Because the great cloud is completely saturated. For lack of a better word, with my Holy Spirit, that permeates all of the created world. He looks with compassion on you, Claire. He sees your potential. He sees that you are falling the way he fell doing things that wasted enormous amounts of time, and his heart. His loving heart cries out to the Father, Lord, help her, because he wants to see you delivered and fulfilling your potential. Oh, Paul, thank you. He also received a lot of prayer. He was not perfect, although he desired it with all his heart. I had to humble him many, many times through this fault we are discussing. There were times when he ripped his garments in two because he saw the foolishness of his ways. That is why he has taken up your case to pray to the Father for your deliverance. So we are working on this now, aren't we? Well, I certainly feel the conviction, Lord. And that begins, beloved. Now, I wanted to dance with you tonight, because above all things, even your function in my body, you are my bride, my wife and I long to comfort you, as any good earthly husband would. I want you to know how in love I am with you, in spite of all your weaknesses, and I want you to try again, Claire, to get a hold of yourself and refuse these distractions. Now your enemies are going to flood you with them because they understand what I am doing. But this time, I will not allow it, and what I do allow will be to give you a hurdle to overcome. In other words, there are going to be distractions allowed that you, yourself, will have to exercise great wisdom and willpower to overcome. But I am with you, and my grace is sufficient. You will be able to do this with much resolve. And don't forget, the great cloud is looking in on this battle and sending up prayers to the Father that you will indeed succeed. You couldn't have a better group of intercessors, although the ones you have on earth have the ability to offer sacrifices to increase the power of their prayers. Coming to the conclusion that you could be doing so much more for me is the starting point. And it's not just about productivity. I want you to be happy. I know you will be happiest when you share with others the marvelous gifts I have given you. And they too will be inspired to dig deeper into their treasure chest 
of goodies to see what surprises I have for them. It all works seamlessly and synergistically. My body is as integrated and dependent on all the other parts as your physical body is. When one is out of whack, it affects all the others. Isn't it true that when you stub your little toe, the pain shoots through your whole body? Yep, it sure is. In fact, that just happened to me recently. And I walked around all day in pain. Well, that's what I'm talking about. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. All parts fitting together, just as my body is, with me as the head. And so when one suffers, all suffer. Know that I'm with you, Claire, and don't lose track of my presence, not even for a second. I'm right here steering and guiding you. Please be responsive as I'm helping you. And for all of you, my dear heart dwellers, who can relate with her plight, I want you to know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I'm also with you in the very same way. Each of you has unique gifts, and for different reasons the enemy has taken great trouble to make sure they do not get used. So if you are feeling the pressure of the same thing in your own lives, know that I'm also with you to pull you out of this pit, hopefully forever. Understand that those closest to you will at times be the very ones to put demands on you that will steal the time that belong to me. There are times you should yield and there are other times you must draw a line and state your commitment to me and the right to decline the demands of the world they are trying to use you for. Many times their lives are disordered so they look to you to pick up the slack and fix it. There is a difference between being kind and enabling others to continue a lifestyle of disorder. I want you to be aware of that and take each distraction on its own merits and choose to be faithful to me, not the world. On the other hand, if you have someone sick in your family, that needs special attention, and you are the only one who can give it, then it is meritorious for you to stop what you are doing and serve them. This is very pleasing to me, but if this becomes a self-serving habit for them, you will have to put the brakes on it. My family, the enemy comes to you under many guises. I also test you under many guises. You must learn to call on me to help you discern those things that you should do and those things you should not do. In this way, Satan will not steal hours, days and weeks of your time. So please, pay attention to what you are doing each day and the time that belongs to me. Do not compromise or give to any other activity. To do this, you must be very serious and crystal clear about the role that I play in your life and to whom is your first and greatest allegiance. I will reinforce this in your hearts. Listen for my still small voice and prompting. I bless you now with the heart to follow me and to know the difference between the sacred and profane, and keep to the high road. Together we shall do marvelous things because you obeyed. Wow, what a timely message. Thank you, Lord. 